अनुसंधान और गुजरात इंटीग्रेटेड क्लासरूम सैटेलाइट ना माध्यम थी जोड़ती कड़ी इतले संधान हेलो फ्रेंड्स वी आर मीटिंग हियर अगेन फॉर अ लेक्चर ऑन रस्किन बॉन्ड्स द ब्लू अम्ब्रेला दिस इज द टेक्स्ट द ब्लू अम्ब्रेला रिटन बाय रस्किन बॉन्ड यू हैव डन मेनी uh different genres literary genres today we are going to discuss a novella you have done a novel a play poems and various other genres but this is slightly different from the ones that you have done earlier so before we begin the text we start discussing the text uh i would like to talk about uh <clears throat> the author that will be the overview of my lecture we'll talk about the author uh his style uh his uh, expertise in the field of writing we will uh, further discuss on uh, uh, the uh, genre because this being a different genre we will focus some time on novella as a literary form uh when we start discussing uh, the story of the blue umbrella uh we shall also uh, be talking about uh, the characters the themes that are being discussed in the play in the novel uh we shall also be talking about the settings which is very very important uh, ruskin bond is known for his uh, uh, writings where he talks about the indian settings Uh, especially the northern uh, area of uh, hilly areas the foothills of the himalayas uh, in this particular story it is a garhwal uh, area which is being focused and uh, there is a lot of description about uh, this place because it is the love for nature um, that is generally found in the works of ruskin bond so uh, let us look at the first slide uh, as i said this is how the novel is going to be discussed we will talk a little about ruskin bond as an indian english author uh, uh, he's an anglo indian writer who returned to india to finally settle down in this country the place of his birth uh, we will discuss about novella as a literary genre uh, how different novella is from a novel or how different it is from a short story because both novels and uh, short stories are a form of fiction uh, now novella has certain different features which we shall discuss uh, we will focus on the main the major characters the minor characters uh and then we talk about all the various themes that are being discussed in this uh lovely story the most interesting part of ruskin bond's novels or his writings are the settings typical indian settings and when i say when i use the word typical i mean the rural landscape of india is being portrayed here beautifully and especially the uh, foothills of the himalayas that's the place where he has lived all his life and he writes all his stories with that as his back as the backdrop of his works we look at the plots we look at the subplots being a novella we'll find that there are fewer conflicts unlike in a novel that you find uh this novella the point of view when we discuss uh, we have al- earlier discussed about the various points of view in a work so it is sometimes the first person narrator sometimes you have a second person narrator and third is when the author is looking at uh, the various characters in narrating so it is a third category that you find here where the author is talking about as an outsider uh about the story he is narrating the story to his readers 
Now, when we look at Ruskin Bonds uh, as a writer, you know that he's born in a pre-independence era. He was born in 1934 on May 19th. And the place of his birth is Kasali, which is in Himachal Pradesh. And as I mentioned earlier, he's an Indian author with British descent. When we talk about Ruskin Bond as a writer, he is considered to be one of the foremost icon among Indian English writers. Not only does he write, he writes for the teenagers, but most of his works are considered or classified as children's writings. So he's a children's author, and he's a very top-notch novelist. He's written more than 500 stories, novellas, poems, essays. Uh, writing is the only profession that he knows. So that's his bread. Now, we look at the uh, children's books that he has contributed immensely. Children love reading Ruskin Bond. Anthologies of stories of ghosts. Uh, there are stories of the railways. Because railway, uh, Indian railways, uh, which was established before uh, independence, uh, was a fascinating uh, thing. You know, a journey, in a, a railway journey is a fascinating journey. And some of his stories, he has mm, discussed that aspect as well. And we look at the humor in his works. Uh, the best part of, uh, or if you want to talk about the achievements of uh, Ruskin Bond as a writer, uh, we know that he's a Sahitya Academy awardee. He won that in 1993. And he's a Padma Shri. Uh, so he's been uh, felicitated for his contributions. A uh, little more about the author, if we look. We know that he's a very versatile author, uh, popular, and has got a very uh, humble uh, living. You know, so therefore he's considered to be popular and humble Indian writer. Uh, when the British left India, his family also moved uh, to England. But then why did he choose to come back? It was uh, the kind of longingness to be back to the place where you were born. So Ruskin Bond uh, wanted to come back to his birthplace and wanted to settle there because uh, he was feeling so nostalgic about the Indian um, life that he had led. So he decided to come back and settle down in India. His love for mountains is something which is very visible in all his writings. Because as I said earlier, it is about the settings that he talks, the settings where you have the Himalayas, you have the Garhwal area, the Him the hilly areas of the Himachal Pradesh and the places uh, around that. This is where he, his India, uh, you know, lives. So uh, that comes alive in all his works. Uh, if we look at Ruskin Bond as an Indian writer, uh, we have to talk about the Indianness in his writing. Uh, how do we define Indianness? Because in his writings, you look at the settings. It is India. He doesn't talk about any other country but India. He talks about the characters, everyday characters that we see around us. So basically, he focuses on the rural uh, lifestyle, rural uh, people. He talks about the rural-urban divide. And <clears throat> these are the few aspects that he focuses in all his writings. Uh, most of his stories are also associated with the British Raj. As I mentioned earlier, it was Our Trees Still Grow in Dehra, uh, for which he won the Sahitya Academy Award in 1992. Uh, now, his stories reflect, particularly he talks about the social fabric of the country. He talks, not the entire country, but uh, in particular, the foothills of the Garhwal region, which is what he focuses on. So he basically talks about the people, about their lives, and about the hardships that they have to go through. Uh, <clears throat> we look at the settings. So Garhwal, 
is a place that is uh, the foothills of the Himalayas. Uh, in his writings, you can um, see that he is voices his concern for the environment because of the rapid development that takes place. We know that all these uh, hill stations are being encroached upon and there is a lot of uh, deforestation that takes place in and around these areas in the name of development, which is a major concern because he feels that the uh, place has lost its uh, beauty, the natural beauty, because of the deforestation and the development that he talks about. Uh, as I said, India, it was not just India that was calling him back, it was the mountains that called him back. And his bond uh, with the mountains is so evident in all his writings. Uh, the language that he uses, uh, especially uh, he targets the young, uh, that is the children of this country. Most of the stories he talks f about children, uh, the characters are children, and he targets the children. Therefore, the language is very, very simple. Beyond that, he has also written a lot of stories where he focuses on the teenagers. Uh, so, uh, therefore, the language he has restricted to very simple, very lucid, and the witty language that he uses is remarkable. Now, Bond gives voice. Every author has uh, uh, the voice, and the voice is of the masses. Uh, whom does Bond talk about? He gives voice to the rustic people of this country. Uh, so you can see that the uh, rural consciousness is awakened through the characters, various characters. The rural urban psyche is being uh, showcased in his works. So that would be the focus of the novella that we are going to discuss today, The Blue Umbrella. Now, uh, before we move forward with the story, it is essential to understand the genre. Because when you look at the size of this book, it is hardly uh, 82 pages, and that too with a lot of pictures and images. So the novel as a literary genre has, uh, you can consider it as entirely different from the short stories that you would have read. It is not as short as a short story. It is a slight, it's slightly longer than a short story, but it is not as uh, descriptive as, you, as a novel. So, uh, but when we look at a short story or a novel or any other work of fiction, we know that there are basic uh, aspects, characteristics of the genre, which you find in uh, The Blue Umbrella as well. So you'll find various characters, but it would be limited because it's not a full-fledged novel. It is a shorter version of a novel. Now, let's look at how did this uh, word come up. Uh, this type of uh, form was quite popular in the European literature. A uh, lot of novellas were being written. Now, it is derived from the Italian word. Now, the Italian word is novella. Italian word is novella, from which this word, uh, it's derived from the feminine of novello, right? And novello means new. So this book or any of the stories which are narrated in this particular form has a newness to it. Uh, it's different from, as I said earlier, the novels or the short story. So it's a very important point that you have to remember that it is shorter than a novel, whereas it's longer than a short story. So somewhere between a short story and a novel, that's where exactly novella finds its place. This is not a very uh, popular uh, kind of a genre. Therefore, very few uh, novellas are written. So it's not a popular kind of uh, form. But when you look at the characteristics that you find in a novella, they're quite similar to the ones that you find in a short story or, for that matter, a novel. Which are they? Fewer conflicts are found and subplots are found. Fewer because, again, there is no scope for, um, you know, elaborating or uh, there is no scope for uh, developing it further. 
Therefore, uh, you find fewer conflicts, fewer subplots. Uh, there are no multiple points of view. So usually we are not divided into chapters. That's one of the feature, uh, one of the uh, important characteristic of novella. But when you look at this Ruskin Bond's uh, The Blue Umbrella, it has been divided into uh, seven chapters. Uh, but otherwise, usually a novella is not divided into chapters. Uh, you find that there are fewer characters here. It's very easy to remember the names of the characters because there are very few in number. And um, uh, there are conflicts that you say here are more complicated. Now, there's a beautiful quote by Robert Silverbeck who says that the novella is one of the richest and the most rewarding of literary forms. It allows for more extended development of theme and character than a short story. So compared to a short story, novella is richer, but not uh, when you compare it with a novel, because there is a lot of scope for developing the theme as well as the characters that you find uh, here. Uh, unlike you, fi uh, you find that there is very limited scope for its development of a, uh, for the development of its theme or character in a short story. Without making the elaborate structural demands of a full length book. So that's where the quote completes. Now, uh, before we proceed, now since we have already discussed uh, Ruskin Bond as an author, we spoke about a uh, novella as a form. So now while we are working on the blue umbrella, while we are trying to understand and interpret this small novella, uh, we shall also look at the uh, characteristics of the novella. Are they found here? Are they, um, can we justify that it's a novella because of the uh, way it has been uh, written? So the first thing, uh, when we, uh, if I have to talk about the story in a nutshell, how is 